So I decided I want to make money fast, I want to make it easy, so I went to school to be an accountant. When I was done with that, I said, okay, I need to go with the money. And so I took off and I went to New York. And when I went to the employment agency there, I must have been interviewed by a genius because the first thing he said to me, he says, well, you're from Kentucky, you must like have And I assumed he saw a picture of a horse on a calendar somewhere and just assumed that everybody's from Kentucky like that. I said, animals are okay, I would never hurt one, so can we get on with it? And he said, well, how would you like to work for the ASPCA? I really thought he was talking about a place like an IBM. I had no idea what the ASPCA was. That sounds interesting, why don't you tell me about it? And he says it's a place that takes care of unwanted, mistreated, neglected, and abused animals. I said, sounds like a nice place, but what are you talking to me about? I have no interest in that. And he says, well, they need somebody that can come in with more of a financial and business mind, that can work on budgets, etc. So they talked me into it. I started my career there. In seven months, I lost 25 pounds. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was tormented by what I was witnessing. The ASPCA is no different now, but back then in the 60s, they were killing 140,000 animals a year. There was no discrimination. It made no difference. It was an eight-week-old puppy, eight-week-old kitten, the most magnificent golden retriever, a Siamese cat. Made no difference. The holding period back then was 24 hours. If nobody adopted the animal or claimed the animal in 24 hours, they were killed. I am not going to undignify these animals and say they were humanely euthanized, but they weren't. They were killed. They were thrown 15 or 16 at a time into these big crates, rolled into these high altitude decompression chambers, where all the oxygen was sucked out of these magnificent animals. Sometimes the steel wasn't working properly on the machine. The animals would come out half alive and have to go through it all over again. That's what we were doing with these beautiful animals that we say we love so much. The street gangs in New York were going through a phase back then to prove how tough and how macho. They were actually taking puppies and kittens and nailing them to telephone poles to hear them scream to show they had no emotion, no feeling, they were the tough guy. I would get what's left. So I wanted no part of your animal welfare world. I wanted no part of your humane world. I thought it was very cruel, cool, very vicious. So I was going to leave. Mutual of Omaha made me a lucrative offer to run their New York City offices, so I was going to leave. I gave the A my two weeks notice. I was down to six days, six days before I was to leave. When my secretary came in and said, Mike, we have a door hit by a car on Davidson Avenue in the Bronx. I said, okay, get a drive around and get it. She said, that's just it. We have no drivers available. I need to tell you, I did exactly what any one of you would have done in my position. I just took off my suit jacket, put on a uniform jacket, took the ambulance out myself. When I got to Davidson Avenue, this little can of black terrier shepherd looked just like Benji from the movies. But he was laying in the street, and he was bent almost backwards in half. The car that hit him, hit him with such force, snapped his back and left him there to die. Just as I got out of the ambulance, and I'm about to reach down for him, and he's shaking so badly from fear and pain, just as I'm about to reach down for him, these three fellas came out of the apartment building door and said, what do you think you're doing? I said, it's obvious, this is one sign, I'm taking you to the hospital. They said, you're not taking him anywhere. I said, what? It's your door. They said, no, we're betting on how long it's going to live. I said, well, you guys are going to sick. So I reached down, I scooped this little one up, and I'm holding him cradled in my arms, and he's shaking so vehemently, I thought he was going to fall. So then I just looked down at him, and he was staring into my eyes as if he was staring into my soul. And he told me to fell down for those seconds in time. And his body just started to calm, like he felt, I feel safe now. And then just as I turned to reach for the ambulance door handle, that's when these three fellas beat me from behind, stabbed me, and laid me in the street. So now the role is completely reversed. I'm the one lying, dying in the street. So that's when I found the compassion that these animals have for us, that we as human beings will never be able to emulate. We do not have that capacity. That little one that should not have been able to move by 
any shape of the imagination as one more act of kindness to give mankind he blessed me with it. That little one that should not have been able to move found a way to fall to my side, and he started to lick me back to consciousness. He would not give up on me until I opened my eyes again. And when I opened my eyes and I was staring into those beautiful brown eyes one more time and I realized what was taking place, I laid in that street that day and I cried and I prayed, don't do it. Don't take my life. Give me another chance. And I promise you I'll devote my life to that. Well, seconds, not minutes, but seconds after I made that promise, my friend closed his eyes and he crossed over Rainbow Bridge. And we will take our walk someday that was meant to be. But from that day to now, I have kept my promise. From that day to now, I have helped facilitate saving about seven million animals, and I got a few more million in me to go before I go meet my friends. So I take what I do very seriously. It's not a game for me. It's not a hobby for me. When somebody calls and they're sincere and they say, Mike, we need help, and they prove to me how sincere they are, and I still did, as Tara has done, and Rick, I do anything for him, I'll come. And you know why you can't pay me? Because the price of a pet is priceless. I can't put a value on it. So how dare I ever ask for money to do what I do because of a promise I made a long time ago. Their life is very valuable. I have to tell you, I was so excited about seeing the changes that were made at your facility it was great to walk through and see smiles on people's faces, seeing the rapport and the camaraderie together, seeing the love in the people's faces for the animals and the care that's going on. And this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. I feel you've been a hundred, you've been in existence for a hundred years, but in reality you're two years old. You're just starting your growth. And there's so many, I get so many ideas and so many things that you want to do and the dreams that you want to fulfill. And I know it's going to happen because of the foundation. The foundation of you. Now I'm going to do something to let you know just how much I care about you. This is not going to be one of my long talks. Tonight. I'm going to let you know just what I think about you. But first, let's look at what we do and why we do it and let's look to take a peek about what the animals do for us continue to give us over in Afghanistan and Iraq if you think all of us here that happen to know about animals and sensitivity if you don't think that they sense what they're going into and sense what they're going to give the embalmed sniffing dog and the danger that they know is there, but they'll give their life gladly for us. Well, you, my dear friend, are doing all you can now to protect them, to give back. I know that I can pick up a newspaper any day and read about a farmer that saved somebody's life from a fire, saved a child. And the very last thing I read, it says that person was a hero. I could read about a detective, a police officer, that saved some child from being adopted. And they're listed as hero. I could read about a pet that awoke their family from a fire, saved the lives of the family. They're listed as heroes. Rick, Joanne, the board, all you volunteers, all you staff that give so selfishly and so tirelessly of your life to give them life. You are my heroes. 